All right, here is a beautiful 2-5-1 lick from Johnny Smith. He's doing this over the tune wave when it does the 2-5-1 to G major. And it's got some really great stuff happening over the five chord, some great diminished arpeggios and some notes out of the diminished scale and just some good insight into how to maneuver into a couple of different spots on the neck, thinking over uh, the D7 tonality, which is you know something that Johnny Smith is so great about. All of those arpeggio exercises that he does and just really a master of being able to play all over the neck very freely. And I think this line is a great example of that. So uh, over the two chord, we only play one note. We play the root note, the A. So we just do a little grace note. We uh, start with our pointer finger on G on the first string, and we just slide it up to A. So we're just hitting the root note of the two chord. And then um, we still have some stuff happening over the A chord, but it's the anticipation of the five chord. So everything that we see from this point on, I would be willing to bet that he's thinking D7 just a little bit early, anticipating the chord. So after we do that slide to the A, then we go like this. We're gonna put our pointer, or I'm sorry, our middle finger on C sharp on the fifth string and slide it up a fret to D. And then pointer on F sharp, middle on D. Uh, pointer back on F sharp, pinky on A. So if you just look at that, right, he's just doing the D major arpeggio. He's doing a little slide from uh, into the root, right, from the C sharp. And then right here, we put our pointer on C, back down to A with our ring finger and then pointer back on C. So now we added the flat seven, right? So D dominant seven arpeggio. And then ring finger is gonna play D on the third string and then just go up a fret. I'm using my ring finger, finger again. I'm not exactly sure um, what fingering he's doing, but I found that this was the easiest for me to get it quickly. So uh, ring finger on E flat, middle finger on F sharp and pointer finger on A. I wrote this as an eighth note triplet. This specific rhythm was a little unclear to me when I was slowing it down and listening to it. It's kind of just like a flurry of 16th notes. And then th this part right here, it seemed to slow down a little bit, but I don't know if eighth note triplets is exactly the rhythm that he's playing, but uh, I tried to notate it the best that I could. Uh, but if you're familiar with this solo and you think that the rhythm is slightly different, please let me know in the comments. Um, so up to there, we have this. Okay, now when we get to that, that E flat, F sharp, and A, right, that's the flat nine, flat nine, third, and fifth. So he's doing a D7 flat nine arpeggio. And from this point on, he just proceeds with some diminished stuff. So. And then we're going to go like this, put our pointer finger up on C on the first string. And this is uh, C, ring finger on D, hammer on to E flat with your point, uh, pinky. And then pick C again with your pointer. And then this is kind of like a, a staple of the diminished scale. You take the exact same thing that you just played and just move it up three frets and it works, right? And that's what he does. So after we do that in the eighth position, move your pointer finger up to the 11th position. You do 11, 13, I'm sorry. Yeah, 11, 13, 14, hammer on with the pinky and then pick 11 again. All right, so up to there we have this. sounds just a great sound so intervallically what we have right there these last couple notes flat seven root flat nine flat seven and then flat nine sharp nine three flat nine so technically this could also be altered this last part right because they're not specifying if there's a sharp five or a natural 13 but um based on the beginning part of the the, the run that he's doing He's doing the natural five and then he's throwing in these notes. So I would just say it's that half hold diminished scale that he's thinking over the D7 chord. Um, so after that, then we do this. We get to the G major chord and you take your pinky on F sharp on the first string and just slide it up a fret to G. So we land on the root with a little grace note and then pointer goes to D, which is the fifth. And then middle finger is going to play A sharp on the second string and slide up a fret to B. So another grace note to a chord tone, right? The, uh, up to uh, half step below the third, right? The B note is the third. And then we end like this. Pointer finger plays D on the third string. Then your pinky goes to A on the second string and back down to D. So intervallically right there, he does the fifth, the ninth, and the fifth. So that's a nice little interval uh, set that you can do over a major chord. Start on the fifth and then play a fifth above that. You get the, the five and the nine, right? Two nice intervals against a major chord. So the whole thing slow would be this. Three, four. All right, a little 
faster. Three, four. So like I said, really kind of the meat of this line is happening over the D7 chord with all that diminished stuff going on. But you could see some uh, grace notes and some approach notes right over the two chord. He does just a grace note to the root. We get to the one chord, does that half step grace note into the root and then a half step below the third into the regular third. And then we have that little fifth that we were talking about going from D to A, which gives us the five and the nine against the major chord. So some really great stuff going on uh, over this lick. And Johnny Smith is just such an incredible player. I'm glad I was finally able to get around to doing a lick of his. Um, and that's it. That's our episode for this week. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope you learned something. And if you would like to donate and support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash Music or paypal.me slash Music. That's our episode for this week. I will see you guys at the next episode. Take care.